long-term care, you know, so any type of uh, hospitalization, um, nursing home care, um, things like that. That's the basic area that this is supposed to cover. Uh, in order to actually get a nurse into a nursing home, um, nursing homes average about $100,000 a year to live in. Uh, and most insurances, of course, won't even touch much of that. You can get nursing home related care under Medicaid. You have to be extremely poor. Um, you're going to have to sell most of your assets, um, things like that, if you do have assets and you need this. So this is part of the, the appeal for a long-term care insurance. Um, we don't know if it actually works uh, yet. It might work for some. There's some problems in, in every insurance area. We don't know exactly what all the problems are in long-term care insurance yet, because it's actually relatively new. Relatively new. Um, so let me move on here. And these are just some of the services that are covered uh, for, for that. No, I'm not going to get into. Disability is critically important to understand. Uh, disability insurance is, is super important because in this case, we have a much greater chance of being disabled uh, than we have ending up in a nursing home. And so in essence, uh, disability becomes really important. What does disability insurance protect against? It protects against loss of income. Loss of income. You're protecting your earnings. Uh, those are protected because you cannot work because of the disability. Okay, so disability is really protecting your earnings from work because if you become disabled, you probably can't work or you'd have to reduce your hours of work. Uh, a friend of mine, way back in Boston, I lived in Boston for many years. Um, and, you know, I, my first job was in 1994 at, at teaching college and the librarian there had developed carpal tunnel syndrome. And carpal tunnel is a very terrible thing that happens in the wrists, uh, in this case for her. And as a librarian who could not really use a keypad, uh, a keyboard, um, I'm not sure what she could do. But she was limited to basically using her hands two hours a day. So forget about a 40-hour a week, 40 hour week job. Um, down to two hours a day is 10 hours a week. What about all that lost income? Yeah, that's what disability insurance is supposed to cover. Okay. Uh, I'm going to show you the definition of a disability from Social Security's perspective, uh, since that program is always one of the first ones that are brought up, but it's not necessarily, it's not the best program <laughs> that you want, um, because of, of the rules are actually quite specific. Uh, and one of the things that one of the better ins disability insurance programs is one that covers you for your own occupation. So in other words, if you cannot do your current occupation because of a disability, you are covered. And that's different than regular disability, which means you can't do any job. All right, so you can't be a teacher. Can you, uh, can you be a cashier? Okay, well, then you're not disabled. So, you know, it, it's one of those types of things. These policies cost more, um, but they are, uh, they are uh, available. Uh, disability does come from Social Security. It's not the only, that's only Social Security disability policy. Um, it's not exactly the disability insurance that I'm talking about here, um, although it's, it is a disability insurance program. This is actually specifically about you unable to be, unable to work at your job and losing your, your income because of a disability. There's short-term disability, policies and there's long-term disability policies and um, and your employer is the best place to get that. However, you can buy it individually. It's just going to cost a lot more money, a lot more money. And it doesn't cover 100% of your wages that are lost. It usually covers 50% of your wages up to, I think, 80% of your wages might be recovered through disability insurance. Uh, there's usually a waiting period before it kicks in. So you have to not be able to, you know, the waiting period might be 60 days, might be 90 days before you actually get benefits paid. So you're still going to need a, a savings fund. You're still going to need a, um, you know, that, that emergency fund. 
Uh, and when you buy disability insurance, there's always a period that you need to wait before it can actually kick in. That's a probationary period. So they're gonna wanna collect some money first before they actually start paying you, <laughs> right? Um, you also wanna make sure that it's renewable every single year and, uh, and it covers the cost of living, which is inflation. You know, so as your, as your wages would have increased with inflation, that's covered. that's covered. Okay, excuse me. Oh, and that's the end of our show. All right, so let's go back to our, uh, I do have uh, internet slot, uh, things to show you, so let's go there. So uh, Clark was asking about Social Security uh, disability. This is very specific. Uh, this is the Social Security um, website uh, that shows about, uh, about disability. Uh, first of all, they have a specific definition of disability, uh, which means that you cannot really do any job. Okay. You, have to, um, you have to have been paying into Social Security. So, in order to qualify for the insurance, you have to have been paid in. Uh, fully paid in means 10 years of work. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's part of it. If you have fewer credits, you might qualify for a, a limited disability benefit, um, but it's possible. So, disability. Um, Social Security disability is only for total disability. And most disabilities are more short-term, they're partial. And short-term might mean two, three years. Um, and for social security disability to be, to be covered by this, you have to have what's called a total disability, a total disability, which means you can't work at all, okay? So under social security, we consider you disabled if you cannot do the work you did before, um, you cannot, they decide, they decide that you cannot adjust to other work because of the medical condition and that your disability has lasted for and is expected to last for more than a year or to result in, in your death. Um, so it's a very strict definition, okay? And they actually have ways in which they decide if you are disabled and if you qualify and they actually outline this sort of step by step by step here, if you can, can wish, um, you know, is it severe? Because in order to be totally disabled, you cannot do basic things. It's hard standing, it's hard walking, it's hard sitting. Uh, you cannot do basic things. This is where this coverage comes in. Um, and so it's a very, very different type of uh, a coverage than getting disability insurance through your employer which uh, will cover you for short-term, in some cases, long-term disability, should you have anything that interferes with your ability to work. Social Security is specific to total disability, whereas disability insurance doesn't have to be a total, you don't have to be a total car wreck. You can just have a bump, you know, you can have a fender bender and, and that's fine. You know, in other words, you, you might lose control or, or use of an arm or a leg or something. You don't have to be totally disabled. Uh, for most disability insurance. You do for social security disability. Social security disability, they won't even look at your claim really until you've been disabled for a year. So it's really not ideal. What are you gonna do for that year? It's really not ideal to say, okay, I'm just gonna rely on that because I, I've paid into social security. Yeah. No, the process is, uh, is a bit difficult. It's a bit difficult. And they would expect you, uh, again, They, you know that second thing, they said, we will determine you can't do another job. So that means even if you're a lawyer, doctor, whatever, if you can if you can sit in front of a keyboard and type away, or you can be a cashier somewhere and make a living, well, then you're not totally disabled, and thus you're not qualified. 